Well, what, what is it that you particularly like about this Mozart quartet? Well, it's very joyous, very sort of jubilant, the first movement. And in fact, it was the first thing we actually got together with other people to do after this lockdown. So sort of three or four months of not playing at all with other people. And the first thing we played was the first bar of the, the of the hunt and yeah it just was so feel good <laughs> extreme joy we had actually been playing our instruments because you know we had been playing together and um strangely enough because we've been in lockdown there's been one piece and it's also by mozart that we um really wanted to spend some time practicing and that's a yeah. uh, a big piece called the Mozart String Divertimento in E flat, which is a huge piece yeah. of music. And this, this was, a, you, you know, you, in life, you've got to make opportunities for yourself. When bad things happen, treat us a chance to do something. Yeah. So we did that and we've been practicing this. It's like a triple concerto. It's for violin, viola and cello. So we were well immersed into Mozart when we actually left the kitchen, left the house. Yeah and saw other human beings holding instruments. So it was, it was quite something. And to play the hunt, beautiful. What a beautiful piece of music. Do we know why it's called the hunt? I don't know. If, uh, well, I don't think Mozart actually called it the hunt. Um, or, or his publishers did, didn't either. But who, who gave it a nickname? I don't know, really. But um, it certainly got parallels with uh, Haydn's hunt. So, yeah, there's an, an early piece by Haydn called the Hunt Quartet and there is no doubt if you heard the Haydn Hunt Quartet and this piece you'd think they Mozart knew that Haydn Quartet very well it's all it almost feels like it's not like it's a it's a framework but it was in the back of his mind and maybe maybe they were great friends Haydn and Mozart yeah maybe yeah. that it's a little tribute it's a little basis of a lot of the music in the in the Mozart is found melodic shapes in the in the Haydn. It's it's interesting. It's a very interesting thing. That of course makes sense because the quartet completed in 1784 was in fact dedicated to Haydn. So it's an act of friendship um, and by imitation, if you like, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. Maybe we know that they actually played string quartets together. Um, Mozart playing the viola and Haydn was the second violin so I'm sure they probably played both versions of their hunts. Uh, yeah, I mean it's an interesting thing because um, there seem to be these evenings where in Vienna where Haydn and Mozart played together and there were two other um, instrumentalists but both composers not quite as well known today and they were a chap called Dittersdorf and Van Howe. I mean, I've, I've heard, I've heard of the name Dittersdorf, yeah. basically because I play in a lot of orchestras, and I'm sure I've heard my friends on the double bass say, had to um, do the audition playing the Dittersdorf. And we all nod sagely, ah, oh, yes, yeah, the Dittersdorf. Yeah. Never heard it though, never. Yeah. But, he know. was the first violin, wasn't he? His famous first violin at the who time. Was that? Who? Dittersdorf. Dittersdorf, yeah. Dittersdorf was the first violin. Yeah, and Van Howe was the cellist in their quartet. <laughs> kind of like, um, Almost like the maybe it was the first super group, you know, like do you remember the <laughs> Travelling Wilburys, <laughs> Bob Dylan, Roy Orbison, who was it? Yeah. George Harrison, there was that the Tom Petty. Yeah, they they it was already done in about 1750 <laughs> back in Vienna. Yes. All starts. <laughs> yeah. You said you've said that you can hear the countryside in the piece, and I wonder uh, where you heard him. Do you hear, for example, as some do, shepherds' pipes playing in the second melody in the first? Uh, movement do you suddenly think you know yeah i'm out in the fields with the shepherds yeah yeah well, that yeah, you mean the, the the second theme in the development yes um That's there, i think there's lots of composers that use that same sort of shape for shepherd's pipes and it does it does sound very pastoral certainly in the pastoral symphony there's a similar oh. shape phrase isn't there do, 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 do. going into the last movement of do, 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 beethoven do, 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 six do, 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 do. yeah it, yeah. It's that moment, it's so beautiful, isn't it? It really is when you've just, you get to the beginning of the development and that shepherd's pipe, like, like you say, it's yeah. just, it's serene. It's absolutely wonderful. And, I, and then, I you, then you have those um, like little pan pipes playing as well. 
<laughs> oh yeah, it does. And then it's it's almost it gets a bit nervous, doesn't it? Because yeah. you, you you just sit back and just wallow in in the loveliness of it, mm. and then it goes all very. Uh, <laughs> well, it's supposed to be a hunt, I suppose. <laughs> oh, you do, yeah. I mean, it, dep it depends how much of a hunt this hunt is. It certainly starts with the hunting horns, yeah. doesn't it? Bum, ba, dum, bum, ba, dum, bum, yeah, ba. in fact, when you're playing it, oh, I often think that it sounds, this should be a wind quartet, really, because it, it sounds very sort of like a, like, yeah, woodwind playing. It does. <laughs> Actually, that's interesting. The, the fact that we're in the key of B flat um, doesn't sound much to people who don't really know, but we're in B flat and we're playing stringed instruments. Yeah. It's, that's a real woodwind key, because it's slightly awkward. It's just the way technically things sit on violins, violas and cellos in B flat and E flat. Two keys, incidentally, Mozart absolutely loved <laughs> making our lives a little bit more yeah. difficult than they need to be. Yeah, because um, yeah, he was yeah. a string player himself. He should have known that it's easier to play in sharp keys than flat keys. <laughs> Actually, I, I learned something this morning because I knew we'd be talking to Christopher. Did you know, I didn't know, but uh, Haydn and Mozart, w when they played together Mozart's string quintets, fabulous pieces, they both played the viola together wouldn't you like to have seen that? Just yeah. the two chaps, the two friends sitting to the old, oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah, yeah they were very fond of each other. And yeah. fact, when he dedicated these, these quartets to Haydn, he's actually said, to my best friend. <laughs> isn't that lovely? Yeah. And that, there's a good, um, it's about double his age, isn't it? Much older, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 The movement is interesting, it's a minuet. And, and, and one thinks you couldn't get farther away from being out in the countryside than a minuet. And yet it too sort of has the breeze of open air through it, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it, it, it does. Because I, 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 I think it's quite it, stately, isn't it? It's, it feels almost aristocratic, I think, the, the first minuet. The, yeah, it's got trio. quite a big breeze. Breeziness to it. It's really similar. The minuet, not so much the trio, the minuet is almost exactly the same as in the Haydn Hunt minuet. It's very interesting. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a minuet, it's not like one of those Haydn minuets where it's sometimes in uh, what a lot of his string quartets. He really does get rustic. He really does put the welly boots on and start dancing around heavy. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yeah. Haydn? Mozart, not so much. Definitely not, not so much in this. You get a few mm. offbeat shoves with the <laughs> shoulder just to sort of. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it doesn't. It's not as rustic, is it? I mean, we we were playing. The, we we played the the Haydn Fifths Quartet, and there's a very heavy dancing minuet and trio in that one. Yeah. It's almost getting get, getting towards. You can hear Mahler sort of. <laughs> rubbing his hands together wanting to get involved in a bit of this well i think with that one you can almost hear feel the mud on your boots absolutely yeah, yeah definitely. absolutely <laughs> you both feel that the, that the third movement of Dargio is the emotional heart of this piece it's a, it's like all of mozart's later adagios i mean heart stopping but do you feel that this is really where the the emotional center of the work is oh definitely yeah it's it's absolutely beautiful and he's poured, he's poured everything into that movement, I think. He really turns all the knobs, doesn't he? Yeah, again, there's a, there's a point in it where um, the violin and the cello take, it, take in turns to sing over these repeated chords mm. in violin two and viola. And it really is so beautiful. It, I mean, when we played this for the first time, and. It's just almost out of this world beautiful. It's not, it's not like from, it's from a time who knows when. It's, it's out of this world, really. Mm. You can but really... That, that duet for the first violin and the cello is a pretty challenging uh, moment musically, isn't it, Jane? I mean, you know, both of you, you and Michelle have got to be absolutely on your metal. Yes, yeah. It's, everything has got to be very clean. And, and then she copies me. So she's got to imitate the way that I've played it. Um, yes, mm. but it's just lovely to play as well. It's beautifully written, even, oh, though, it, even though it's in a flat key. <laughs> yes, it is. But it, there's something about when um, an accompaniment starts and then the, then the melody comes in slightly later with a long note 
and then it's just elaborate at the end. It's just, you know, shall we? It's genius, isn't it? It's genius, but it's so beautiful. And there's, there's other things about that. The silences in that piece, in that work, you you just want the, just want it to go on forever. It's it's, it's music like that. <laughs> we know that this took Mozart a long time, over a year, and for a man who wrote often with such facility and grace and ease, that's a long, long time. But we know above all that the finale uh, was originally going to be a polonaise. And we know because we've got the sketches that he entirely rejected his original idea uh, and he created the second finale. Give me an idea of what he actually decided to replace that polonaise with. What happens in the fourth and final movement? Well, the, it's it's a very light-hearted, it's quite, yeah. it's quite almost playful, yeah. playful sort of comic opera almost. Yeah, it's interesting. He was going to finish with a polonaise. Is that is that unusual, Christopher? That he cancelled his first idea for Mozart? I'm not, is that? It's the only occasion that I've come across recently where you know he changes his mind so radically. I, I mean, I can't remember how many bars he wrote of the original, but a number of bars. So yeah. a number of measures. Of his mind are already there and then he just rejects it of course i think he did um, somewhere else we knew we were going to be doing this we've done a little bit of researching and apparently um he wrote the violin one part in its entirety and then he wrote a cello part then he went down with a very bad streptococcal um infection which um cause partial kidney failure he was really seriously ill for about three to six months and then he came back and kind of revisited it and filled in the middle which is a strange way to, to go about composing but um mm. maybe that he had a change of heart about what he wanted to do with the last movement um at that point and it's, it seems strange to me that the whole thing is so light-hearted and so full of life and joy for the first movement and the last movement particularly and that the poor man must have been feeling at death's door <laughs> yeah but it's strange that he could write such good yeah. humored music when he was feeling so ill yeah I think he it's life i don't think really you could tell what was going on with mozart in his life from his music it's one of those yeah, it's composers, almost as it? if his writing of music was his a release own, yeah therapy oh. for him yeah. i was just thinking maybe, maybe um Maybe, I mean, it's such a wonderful slow movement, maybe to have the lighthearted is the absolute ultimate contrast rather than the polonaise, I don't think. It's, it's such a contrast. We yeah. get to the end of the slow movement. So it's it's almost like a little scherzo, a little jokey yeah. movement. Yeah. Um, it's quite tricky as well, that last movement. Yeah, it's quite it, tricky. it poses problems for the players, doesn't it? It's got the same sort of problems. If you're not um, concentrating and totally on the ball, the last moment, a, a symphony does exactly the same thing. And if you're not on it, you'll, you'll be left behind and have a bit of trouble. The um, Jupiter Symphony, the last movement of the Jupiter Symphony, it's the same entries in strange places, odd lengths yeah. of phrases. You have to have the strength of your convictions and come That's in it. Yeah. and not be led astray by what somebody else is doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, yeah, you... You have to believe in yourself with this. He's obviously having a great time. Hmm. The comp comp composing. Yeah. I think he's trying it... to impress Haydn as well. I think he think? wants to show Haydn what do he do can think... do. Do you want? To, does he want to impress him? Do you think yeah, he wants I to impress Haydn? He do you think he? <laughs> but he. Do you think he, he already knew how? Hi, well, Haydn Mozart, certainly... how great he was himself. Yeah, what do you he, think? he certainly was impressed. That, didn't he write to? He wrote to Mozart's father when after he'd been given these six quartets dedicated to him and said he's the greatest living composer that I know. <laughs> he seems a lovely chap, doesn't he, Haydn? Mm. What a nice man. You'd, you'd want to meet him. Thank you both very much indeed. Wonderful insights into what we're uh, about to hear. And we're going to hear The Hunt, that late string quartet by Mozart, and indeed dedicated to Haydn, two great musicians.